Welcome to another video. My name is Radi and you're watching my channel Radi the Brand. Today we're going to do a slightly bigger project using Node.js, Express and EJS. We're going to be building a simple news website where the data comes from an external API. The main features of this project will include displaying the main features of this project will include listing the articles, having a full view of a specific article, and also will add a search functionality. I tried using the newsapi.org website to pull the news data for the articles, but the information wasn't good enough, so I decided to use my blog, which is built on WordPress, Bruh. and it has REST API built in by default. Saying this, feel free to use whatever API you like. The only difference is going to be the URLs, the parameters and the object names, I think. I can't express how easy it is to get started. Please note. We won't be doing much CSS in this project as we are mainly focusing on building the functionality. As always, the code will be available on my website. Please smash the like button, consider subscribing to my channel, and let's go! Welcome everybody, let's get started. First of all, I have already created a project folder called Node.js News Website Recording, and this is where I will be initializing the project. So if you're on Windows, you can do left shift, right click, open PowerShell window here. And if you're Mac, you're going to have to be using the terminal, I assume, and all you have to do is CD to your project folder. Once you're here, let's initialize a new project by doing npm init. And this will ask us a couple of questions. The only question that I'm going to answer is the package name. This is basically the name of our project. So I'm just going to call mine node.js-news. For the rest, I'm just going to be uh, pressing enter to save us some time. And once we're done, this is this will ask us, is this okay? And I'll just press enter again. And this should create the package.json file for us in our project folder, as you can see in here. For this project, I will be using Visual Studio Code, but of course, feel free to use whatever code editor you prefer. With Visual Studio Code, you can usually do code space column and press enter and this will open the project for you which will save us a little bit of time but if you're not using visual studio code just go to your uh, code editor file open a uh, project and continue from there now that we are here let's open the package.json file and quickly have a look at it as you can see we have a few things here like the name the version the things that we just created. But before we start programming, we need to add a few dependencies. The dependencies that we need to add are Axios, Body Parser, EJS, and Express. Let's have a look at how we can do that. In PowerShell, for me here, I can just clear everything for a second. And let's start installing all the packages now. We can do npm install, and we can start listing the packages that we need. The first one is Axios. The second one that we need is the body parser. Then we need the EJS templating engine. And last but not least, we need Express. Press enter once you're done and this should install all the dependencies for us. And if you go back to Visual Studio Code, you will see the dependencies being added here in our package.json file. Now, the last thing that I want to do in this file is to add Nodemon. Nodemon will basically restart the server for us every time we make a change in our project. So that's quite useful and let's have a look at how we can add it. To add Nodemon, we need to add it as development dependency. So to do this, we can do npm install dash dash save dash dev and then we can do Nodemon. This should take a couple of seconds as well. And once this is done, we can go back to package.json and as you can see in here, we have dev dependencies nodemon. To make sure that our project starts with nodemon, we actually, first of all, gonna have to create our main file of our application. And I usually call this app.js, 
So let's create a new file called app.js in our root folder. And let's make sure that this app.js file is run with NodeMod. To do this, under scripts in our package.json file, we can do start column, and then we can do nodemon space app.js. And then we need to finish this with a comma. Save this, and we can close the package.json file now and start writing our application. To get started, the first few things that we need to do is include express and make sure that our express starts on a specific port number that we will add in a second. The first thing that we need to do here is set up or express app. To do this, let's include express. We're doing const express equals require and this will require and we need to require express inside here just like so then we need to make sure that we run express so we can do const app equals express and we need to set a port number so we can do const port equals 5000 and last but not least we need to make sure that our app is listening on this port to do this we can do uh, let's come over here listen on port 5000, just like so. And we can do app.listen and then pass the port number, which is 5000 here. We just pass the variable, comma, and we're gonna have an arrow function in here. So we can do it like this. And for the arrow function, all I want to do is I want to console log listening on port number. So to do this, let's do console dot log. And with the single slanted bracket, we can do listening on port and we can pass the port number with a dollar sign and curly brackets and then port the port variable from here save this and technically speaking if we run the project now from powershell we can do npm start and if everything is working we should be getting this green line here saying starting node app.js listening on port 5000 this is all good so far, but of course, if we go to the browser right now and we try to visit localhost on port 5000, you will see that we're getting this cannot get. And we will get to all of this in a second, but we're gonna have to set up our project folders first, set up our views, routes, partials, CSS, and so on before we do that. So, not, so let's not rush anything. Let's set up our project and do everything one by one. Before we do any more code in our app.js file, let's actually start looking at the project folder. And then we will be doing things one by one so it all makes sense. So first of all, let's start by creating a public folder. And this is where we can store things such as CSS, images, um, any other external JavaScript that you might use. Hopefully we won't have to, uh, but just for example, I'm going to create three folders. So let's say we have a CSS folder, we have images folder, we have um, JavaScript folder. Of course, I probably won't be using the JavaScript and the images, but it's just good to have, just in case you want to add your logo or some, or you want to make your website look a lot better then I will. Now for the CSS, I'm definitely gonna have some CSS. So let's create an SCSS file and I'm going to call mine styles.scss. I like using SCSS just because of the nesting, but of course you can just use normal CSS if you wish to. And in Visual Studio Code, I am using the extension called Life SAS Compiler, which will compile the uh, SCSS into a normal CSS so let's do that. Let's watch for SCSS changes. And as you can see, this compiled my styles.scss into a CSS file. Let's close the CSS because we're done with this. As I said, we're not going to have any images or JavaScript, but just for the example, let's leave them in here. And let's now create a source folder, which will be structured uh, in here in the root. So we can do source. And inside the source folder, we'll have things such as the routes, views, partials, and so on. So let's create the first folder, which will be all views. And let's create another folder, which will be all routes. 
And inside the views, let's create another folder, which will be partials. Now, everything will make sense once uh, we start creating the uh, code for this. So don't worry. The first thing that we might want to do is to create a view. And because we are kind of like creating a news app, let's create a file called news.ejs. We will be using EJS for our view engine. Let's now create our route file. And I'm going to create the route file with exactly the same name as the news, but let's do news.js. And the reason for this is because think the views as kind of like our HTML and think the routes, the news.js file as the functionality of the news EJS file, if that makes sense. So inside here, we can actually start writing our HTML just like so. And let's add a title. So for example, I don't know, note.js news. And we can actually include our style sheet. So we can do link.css. And now inside here, you might see that we're gonna have a little problem. In order for me to go to the public folder, CSS, and then add my styles.css file, it's gonna take a little bit of uh, work. So we're gonna have to go backwards, then we're gonna have to go inside the public CSS. And this could be a little bit of a pain. And this is where we're going to be using the static files, which I will show you in a second. So what I want to actually achieve is I want to make sure that every time we put something like slash CSS, I want this to correspond to this folder. And if, for example, we added an image with the source, I wanted to, I want to be able to do slash IMG and then the actual image. So I don't know, cat.jpg. And I want this to be going inside public images and then cat.jpg. To be able to do this, we're gonna have to do this inside the app.js. And in a moment, we'll have a look at the routes as well. So let's go back and let's set all static files. Let's comment here. Everything will make sense as we are going through. So don't worry. I know at the moment we haven't seen anything working yet, but as long as you go into your PowerShell and you're not seeing any errors, we should be good to go. Let's minimize this and continue. So let's set up all static files. To set up the static files, we can actually use express static. So to do this, let's do app.use express.static. And then we need to pass the public folder, this folder here. So in order to be able to use the slash CSS, slash images or slash JS, we need to do the following. We need to do app.use and we need to then pass the folder that we want to, uh, the path that we want to use. So for example, slash CSS, and then we need to actually tell express static where this um, CSS folder is. So we can do express.static and now we can go to the root folder by using the, uh, the name functionality. The name is basically a middleware function to save files from within a given root directory. So basically I want to go to the root directory of this project with the name. And then I want to add public, which is the public folder here and then slash CSS, just like so. And hopefully this will now allow us to write, if we go back here, hopefully this will allow us to write slash CSS. And then my file is actually called styles with an S at the end dot CSS. And hopefully this should now work. But also I want to add images and JS just so you have it as an example. To do this, I'm going to use Alt, Shift and Down Arrow to copy this line twice. And I'm going to change this to images like so. And I'm going to change this to uh, JS, JavaScript. The next important bit that we need to do is make sure that we have our templating engine set to EJS, as you can see here, EJS. Earlier, when we started this project, we did um, add EJS, if you remember. So we can start using it straight away by doing the following commands. 
So inside here, let's do templating engine. And to include the templating engine and the views, we can first of all, um, but before I add EJS, I want to make sure that our view engine view path is actually set to this views folder. And to do this, we can do app.set views, and then I can do comma, and inside single quotes, I can do dot slash source, which is the source folder here, and then slash views. And then we can set the view engine to be EJS by doing app.set view engine, and then comma EJS. If you wish to use something else, all you have to do is change the view engine name from here. So you can use something like bug, handlebars, or whatever you wish. Now that we are done with the templating engine, we actually need to set our route and the route that we want to use. Now let's do this inside here. And I know that we still haven't seen anything working on the page, but bear with me, we need to set up all of this and we are getting close. We are getting very, very close. So let's set up the route. For the routes, first of all, I want to create a variable which will go to the routes folder and select this news uh, router for us. To do this, let's uh, do a const and I'm going to call my router news router. And this will be equals require. And then we need to pass the folder which will be dot source slash routes slash news. And we don't actually have to specify .js. Express is clever enough to do this for us. Now we need to make sure that our front page is using this router. To do this, we can do app.use and our front page will be basically just slash. So if you go back to the URL, you will see that we just have the domain name, which is at the moment localhost with the port number. And we just have basically slash. And this will be your homepage, and we want our homepage to be using this news router. To do this, we can do comma and then pass the news router, which we just uh, created here. And later on, by the way, I will show you how to create more routes uh, so you can create more pages and so on. In fact, we we'll probably need to create one more anyway, but we will do that uh, when we need it so you don't get confused. So far, so good. We can actually close pretty much everything now. Um, maybe go to news EJS inside the views and let's just uh, output something like h1 new node.js news, just like this. And now we can start writing our router. For the router, there is a few things that we need to do. And let's first of all include express again express equals require express, just like we did in our app.js. Uh, and also let's um, use the express router. So we can do const, uh, let's call this one news router equals require. Sorry, this will be equals express dot router, just like this. And a very important thing that we need to do is export this module. We need to do module dot exports and we need to export the news router. Just like so. Don't forget this line, it's important for, um, for this to work. Technically speaking, we should be able to now use this router and let's see if we can actually render the news.ejs. To do this, let's use the news router now, news router dot get method. I'm not going to pass any parameters in here. We're just going to do comma. This will be an asynchronous function. So we can do async and we're going to have the request and the response. And this will be an arrow function just like so. So technically speaking, now we should be able to render our news page. To do this, we can do resp response.render. And then we want to render this news uh, EJS page. And to do this, we can just do news. And in fact, yeah, we're not gonna pass anything. So hopefully this shit actually works. Let's save this. And finally, we should be getting, if we go back to the PowerShell, uh, let's 
press a button, maybe C. I don't know. Hmm. Everything seems to be working. Um, let's make sure everything is saved. Uh, and yeah, everything, the node mode just restarted, I believe. So hopefully speaking, if you go back to the browser and go to localhost with the port 5000 and we press enter, we should be able to render the, the news.ejs page, which will output node.js into an H1. And if we inspect the source of this, control and U, you will see that we have the HTML page, which we added in here. So that's pretty awesome. We have all routes working, we can create more and so on. Okay, we've actually managed to do so much so quickly. And now is the interesting part. For the next part, you can use any API that you wish. Originally, I wanted to use this news API, which is kind of like one of the popular news APIs, or you could use Bing as well. But the reason that I didn't end up using it is because it doesn't provide very much information. It's a little bit, um, most of the images are broken and it just doesn't look pretty. And also the, I think that the only way you could really use this information is that if you just list news and directly link those news to the real articles, as you can see, the content is very short. It's nice and fast for, uh, for learning purposes, but I don't know if I would use this in a normal project. Maybe the paid version has uh, more content. I don't know. But feel free to use this. Uh, it would be, feel free to use this. It would be very similar to what I'll be doing anyway. I decided to actually use my, my WordPress website, which I know that is not going to be like a news website, but it's the same principle. We have headlines, we have content, we have images and so on. And the reason I wanted to use this is because the WordPress has built REST API, which provides so much information and it's a lot more fun to work with. The WordPress REST API, you can simply go to a WordPress website unless they've blocked it. And you can do wp-json, then wp-v2. And then for example, you can do the different endpoint, endpoint, but for example, you can do posts slash, and this should bring all the posts or at least a few posts uh, from my website. As you can see, we have so much more information that we can work with. I know that some of the articles, like the information is actually rendered with like HTML, but this could be actually a good thing in a way, just because all articles will look a little bit better than they would if it was just uh, plain text. To help us out, I'm actually going to be using a tool called Postman, uh, which you can install on Mac, Linux, and uh, Windows. And Postman is basically really handy if you want to like organize the collections of API calls. I have my Node.js news here organized. And for example, just the thing that I just showed you I have, for example, let's remove this. I have the my website, wp-json, wp-v2 slash post, and I can use anything like the get method, the post method, and so on to test stuff. And if I send this, you will see the output. It's a lot like, I would say it's a lot prettier, um, a lot easier to read, and we can do all sorts of stuff with this. Um, and we'll probably, you can do this in the browser as well, or you can use it in here. I just like saving some of the routes. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier. And some of the routes that we'll be using is posts. Uh, we have individual posts here with an ID. We have a search, for example, search Photoshop and so on. So let's send this and see the information that we get. By the way, this is my website. This link will be available in the description below. But if you have your own API, if you wish to use the news API, feel free to do that. This will be much faster than mine because my hosting is a little bit slow. And to be fair, if too many of you are using mine, my server might crash, you never know. <laughs> so yeah, if you have your own WordPress website, feel free to use yours or feel free to use this news API, or you can use anything like Twitter, 
Medium, uh, Bing News, or whatever. Enough talking, let's continue by pulling up some data. Now, if you remember, if you open package.json, we install this dependency called Axios, and this is basically going to help us to fetch the data from my blog. To use this, we can simply go to the uh, news router, open this, and we can include it in here. So let's do const Axios, and then we can require by doing Axios inside here, like so. Uh, now to use Axios is actually fairly simple and fairly powerful. Um, and Axios help us with a bunch of stuff such as um, error handling. It makes sure that uh, the data is passed in a JSON file and so on. But let's have a look at how we can use it. So we're actually going to comment this out for now because we won't need it. And let's start. First of all, I want to wrap everything into a try and catch just in case we have any errors. This will be very handy. So let's do try catch. Inside try, let's pass or URL that we're going to be getting the data from. So in this case, I'm going to be passing uh, write.co.uk, wp.json, wp, v2 posts. So let's copy this and we can do a const and let's say news API is equals uh, we can do await, which will be asynchronous, asynchronous, and we can do axios.get, and then we can pass the URL just like so. And the reason I'm putting it into the slack slanted single quotes is just in case we need to pass any uh, data later on inside here with the dollar sign and the curly brackets. So for now, we won't be doing this. Now that we get the data from this URL, it's actually super easy to do. We can literally access this data by doing news, news API, and then dot data. And this will grab this object for us here. To prove, um, uh, to show you that this is working, what we can do is we could potentially console log this. So let's do console the log. And inside the console log, let's do news API dot data. And let's save this. Hopefully we are not going to get any errors now, but if we go to a page and refresh, you will see that we are getting this massive array, uh, which is pretty much this, everything that came up from Postman. And this is awesome. It, it means that we can access this object now and start putting some of the data. Before we do that though, we need to make sure that we have something uh, in place for the errors. So for the errors, let's do error to be shorter. And inside here, we can do if response, uh, if error dot response, then we can handle this uh, in a couple of ways. We can do console log error dot response dot data. We can also do response status. We can also do response headers and so on. And also we can have else if we can have error dot request. And this will basically handle requests that were made by the server and return no response. So we can maybe do console log, log and we can have error dot uh, requests Let's copy this like so and then we're gonna have else if something is wrong with the request then we can do console dot uh, error and we can pass error slash error dot message For more information on axios just go to the npm package and they have a bunch of other examples that uh, you can do but this is fairly solid example and we should be good to go in here to start using it. We do have to do a couple of more things, but we'll get to that in a second. If you want to render this data on or news.ejs, what we have to do is do the same thing that we did in here, but past some data. So let's copy this. In fact, let's remove it and we can render it in here. So try to get the data and then render the data in here. So I'm going to actually remove the console log. OK, 
because we won't need it anymore. And we can do rest.render news. News is the EJS page that we want to render. And we want to pass the object that we want to render. And we need to pass this data here. To do this, we can do comma, and then inside curly brackets, we can pass it as articles, for example. So because we are pulling articles, let's name it articles. And then the data that we are getting from uh, this. So we can do news API. Right. So dot data. So hopefully this articles will be holding all the data. And now we have to loop through this using EJS and output some of the articles on our page. Let's have a look at how we can do this. And by the way, I could have um, created a variable for this, but I didn't think that it's necessary. The code is fairly simple here. So let's just use it as it is. So let's save this and have a look at how we can actually loop through this through this articles object. Uh, let's tidy this up as well, like this, and save. Let's go to the views news.ejs and let's have a look at how we can loop through the articles. So what I want to render, for example, this is uh, one object, one big object. So I can go inside here and I can start rendering some of those details. For example, I want to render the title and inside the title, we're going to have to render this render title. So let's just remember this and let's go back and make sure that we live through that. We can actually write JavaScript in EJS and the way it works is we can open EJS by doing uh, arrow and percentage and we can close EJS by doing another percentage and the closing array. So inside here, we're going to have to do a for each so we can loop through this article objects. So let's copy this, paste the articles dot for each. And then this will be a function, which will take two parameters. First one will be article. And, and this will be basically the key for looping through each object. And then we can actually also have index as well, if you wish to. So we know every time we loop for an item, we can give it an index. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But I probably won't be using this in this example. And then we need to actually cut this uh, bracket, uh, open curly brackets. And let's make sure that we close everything before we do anything else. So open EJS, close EJS, curly bracket, close curly bracket, close curly bracket, and close normal bracket. We should be good to go. And now I want to loop through the articles and inside articles, I want to render, for example, the title. And inside the title, we have rendered. So remember this, some of them we can just render straight away, but this one, the title has a rendered object inside it. So what we have to do is we can do the article dot title dot rendered and save. Actually, this needs to be inside EJS as well. So let's open EJS like so and put dash on this one because we'll be rendering text. And let's close EJS, save this, and let's have a look at what we get. If we refresh the page, you should be able to see a lot of titles. Obviously at the moment we don't have any styles, but as long as you're getting the data, this is really good. What I want to do next is spend two or three minutes doing the CSS. The video will be sectioned, so you can actually skip this section if you're not interested at doing the CSS. So let's quickly, super quickly style uh, something. So let's make our website look a little bit better now. This section is all about the CSS. First of all, let's create a header for our website. And this header, we will actually have a class of header. And inside here, I'm thinking of adding a, like a logo and maybe the search bar. So for the logo, we can do div, with the class name of header underscore underscore logo. And I'm not actually gonna have a logo, but let's just do node.js news. And let's add our search bar. I hope that you can hear the noise from the outside. Uh, for the search bar, let's do a form. For the search bar, let's do another div with the class name of header. 
underscore underscore search. And this is where at the end we'll be creating our search bar. But for now, let's just put search like so and save. Okay, now that we have the header, let's save and see what we get. We have the Node.js header, we have the search. Let's add a few more elements to style or wrapper and then we'll jump to the CSS. For the wrapper, I'm just going to keep this super simple. So let's do a class name of wrapper and I'm going to wrap all my articles inside this wrapper just like so. And then for the news, what I'm thinking of doing is I'm just going to have another class name of news just to make it look a little bit different. And I'm going to wrap, I'm going to wrap this inside news just like so. So the wrapper will be global, but this news will be maybe just specific to this page. We'll see. And then for each article, I actually want to make sure that each article is kind of like a card. So what I can do is let's do another class name of news underscore underscore card and do that. And let's wrap the content inside it just like so. It will make sense in a minute. And actually I want all the cards to be links. So instead of a div, let's do this as a link. And I'm going to have to do href now. And maybe for now, let's leave this with a hashtag just so we don't have broken links and we can style it and then we'll come back to all of it. I think this is looking good. So we only have the title. Let's render this into maybe like an h2 tag, let's say h2. Let's render some text. So can we do lorem ipsum? Yes. Okay. So we can do lorem ipsum in here and toggle world wrap. Just for example, of course, we're going to get the original text from the API later. And maybe we'll have a thumbnail as well, but we'll do that a little bit later. So let's save this and let's see how this looks like. It's probably not going to be pretty. But OK, we have all the titles and so on. Let's uh, make sure that we style them super quickly. And I'm actually going to do all the styling right now. Uh, all together. So let's get on that. I'm going to also, I'm going to keep this super basic. And before we start doing anything else, I'm going to include a font from Google. And this font is called the Source uh, Sans Pro. So we can find, you can find this on Google fonts. And let's include that and continue. Save this and let's jump to styles.scss. I'm just going to do very basic styling for this and I will be super quick. So let's get going. So for the body, we're going to reset the margin with pressing margin zero. Let's do the font family to the font that I just included, which is source sans pro. Let's do sans serif. Then let's make sure that our background color is not white because I want to make the cut uh, to white. So let's do something grayish like F6, 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 uh, probably F6, F6, would have, I don't know. This will do. Let's save this. Let's go back, have a look. OK, so for the images, I'm just going to make them kind of responsive. So we can do max width. Let's do 100 percent for the headings. Let's make sure that the font size is like slightly smaller than the default one. So font size, this will be 1.6 rem. So then we're not going to have a button because the articles will be kind of like cards. Uh, so let's not do that. Let's start the header now. So we have a class of header and inside the header, let's, because we have two divs, if you remember, we have the div with the logo and the search. What we can do is display this as flex, justify the content. So they are spaced between. So they're like to the left and the right, then align the items to center. Then we can do padding of 10 pixels. Then we can do the color to be kind of like white. And then let's add the background color to make it more interesting to a nice green color that I've been using lately. And let's add a little bit of margin for the, so the header pushes the content below. So margin bottom 10 pixels and save. Okay, for the logo, 
I'm actually not gonna do anything for this. So let's just start the search for now. And I've already prepared the search, so I'm going to copy and paste it to save us some time. So basically I'm gonna have two inputs, one for the text and one for the submit button, and they just have some padding and I've removed the border. That's pretty much it. So I don't wanna waste any time on this. For the actual wrapper of the page, which is this one, I actually just want to push the content from the sides here. So we have a little bit of padding. Let's do that now. We can do this by just doing wrapper. I'm just going to do padding of zero, one rem, which means that we're gonna have padding zero top and bottom and one rem left and right. And that's pretty much it. So now for the news, for this, for the news part, you can indent as well if you like. Uh, let's do dot news. Um, we can display this as grid to save a little bit of time. So let's do display grid. And I can do grid template columns and I can use the repeater. And then let's say autofill to make it kind of responsive. And then min, min sorry, min max will be 360 pixels minimum for each card and one fraction of the screen maximum for each card. That's good. Also, let's give it a little bit of gap between each card so we can do grid dash gap and that could be to RAM, it doesn't matter. Then for the cards, let's just make them look slightly better than they are now. So we can do cards and inside here, we can do text decoration. And then because I actually wrapped the cards are actually links, so they are gonna be underlined. So let's do text decoration and then, and then we can set up some sort of a color. I don't know, um, let's do, Kind of, I kind of want a black color, but I want it. I don't want it to be too black. Let's do something like this. This, this will do. RGB eight eight eight. That would be fine. And then the background color I want to set as white, and I want to have each card to have a little bit of padding, so they have some space, breathing space. And last but not least, I've prepared some uh, drop shadow on hover. For the cards so let's do and hover and add the box shadow in here and that's pretty much done for this page so we can close this um refresh and let's have a look what we get all right this is much much better of course we don't have any of the images and we don't have any of the real text so let's have a look at how we can bring the images and how we can bring the text as you can also see we have the title here looking nice and the search we will handle the search a little bit later on in this tutorial. Let's bring the data. To bring the data, if you remember, we done article title.rendered and this was taken from this main object. So we have title.rendered. Okay, so we've rendered the title, but uh, instead of rendering the whole content here of the article, all I want to render is the excerpt and then render it. So let's do that. We can do this by Copying this line here, in fact, and pasting it inside the p tag. Uh, let's have a look. Let's remove everything and and paste it inside here. So instead of uh, article title, we're gonna have to do article excerpt. And this is again rendered. So let's save this. Go back to the browser. Refresh. And as you can see, all the text is now rendered. This is exactly the same text as if you were to go to my website in this quick tutorial, in this quick tutorial. And this is awesome. Let's have a look at how we can render the picture now of the article. And for the picture, for the image, I actually done a little bit of modification to my WordPress so we can output it in here. So if I scroll down, we can find the thumbnail URL in here. So let's uh, use that as well. And I will show you another trick in a second. So for the image, I am actually thinking of just adding it in here. So IMG source, and we need to pass the source just with EJS like this, dash article dot thumbnail underscore URL. And let's close EJS. And let's close the image as well. Um, but we are probably going to need an alt tag as well. 
I don't know what to use for the old tag. Maybe we can just use the title rendered like so and save. Let's go back, refresh. And as you can see, some of the images are probably too big. That's why they're rendered a little bit slower. But as you can see, we're now getting the images, which is pretty awesome. Uh, title and everything is looking good. Now, if something happened to this API and it didn't work, let's say we made inside routes, let's say we made the spelling mistakes, spelling mistakes. So I'm going to put two. Uh, let's refresh the page. Let's see what happens. As you might notice now, we're probably going to get an error. As you can see, we're getting an error here and uh, our website is just spinning and nothing is happening. So let me show you how we can actually handle this. So what we could do, potentially if we get an error, we could copy this, paste it in here. So we still want to render the page. But maybe we want to say articles. This time we don't have anything in articles. So we can say articles equals no. And if articles is equals new, we can check with EJS. So we're going to have to do an if statement inside here. So let's start EJS. Just like so, um, sorry, it's going to be if articles is not equals no just like so then then we want to proceed and display all the data but if article is equals no then we're gonna have to do somewhere around here we're gonna have to do our else statement else did i close this sorry i need to close this with a curly bracket as well don't forget and we can do else close and it's open ejs and close the curly bracket just like normal javascript and inside here we can put some message saying uh, no posts found or something like that of course you can style this to look a lot better than it would right now but hopefully speaking if we save this and if we go back and refresh i think it's spinning but let's i think we've broken it let's have a look maybe we need to um Cut it. Error not found. That's good. Uh, hopefully, let's start this again. Hopefully, if I. Now, the problem here is that uh, if I go and refresh now, I don't know what the error is. The error could be inside here, or the error could be inside here that the. What was the error? The error was that uh, ready.co.uk wasn't found. So the error could technically be inside here. So what I could do is technically copy this and we still want to render the or message. So let's copy this three times, save it, and let's go back to a browser and refresh. So as you can see now, because we're getting this error here, uh, we are actually checking with EJS if article is new and then we are rendering no post found. So instead of so instead of our page spinning, we actually have something in place for the error. The next thing that we want to do, obviously, let's first of all fix the uh, API call here. So I'm going to remove the two and save. Let's go back and have a look where everything is working and that's fine. Now, the next thing we can do is create a new router. So when we click on one of those articles, we can actually view the full information of the article. To do this, first of all, let's have a look at how the WordPress J JSON API works. If we go back, uh, the way it works is every article has a unique ID and we can actually query each article with this unique ID. So if we copy this ID, this has a title of Node.js Puppeteer. So let me find the correct one. And so for example, inside here, we have posts and then we're passing an ID. So if I've passed the ID that I just copied and get the request, you will see that we're only getting one object and this object is the one that we need, which is the Node.js puppeteer. So this is how we can actually use this ID parameter for the link and get the correct data. Let's have a look at how we can do this. So first of all, let's make sure that our link has this ID so what we can do is 
inside here we can open EJS, uh, open EJS, close EJS, and we can do article dot id as you saw article dot id in here. We want to grab that, but also I want to create. We could potentially render the full article in here, but I want to show you how we can do another route. So what we can do is let's call this route article, for example. So we can do slash article. So this will be the full article. And if we save, go back to the page. And if you hover over here at the bottom, we're not getting the ID. So Oh, okay. We're not getting the ID because I forgot the dash in here. So let's save this. And now if we refresh again and hover over one of them, if you see here at the bottom, we are getting different IDs for each article, which is brilliant. And so if I was to click in this, you will see that we are getting article with this 5372. And now we just need to create this number with the WordPress API, which I will show you in a second by doing this basically and get the information. All right, let's have a look at how we can use this ID now to actually query the data and display the full article. Now, we could potentially create a different route for a single page, but I was thinking that it might be best just to keep all the news functionalities inside this route. So it's up to you whether you want to split them. Maybe if it becomes, maybe if your project becomes too big, you could split uh, the routes into uh, route single and route search and so on. But for now, I'm just going to use one and show you how we can do this. So luckily for us, there is not much uh, that we have to do. We can literally copy this. We can paste it in here. And all we have to do is this time, instead of uh, just get nothing, I want to add, I want to get this ID from here. To do this, we can use the body parser to pass data from one page to another, just like we're doing so right now. So let's go back to app.js and let's include the body parser. To include the body parser, we can do this under here, under the express. So let's do const body parser and this will be equals require and we need to require the body parser, body, body dash parser, just like so. And we need to add one more line to use the body parser euro encoded. So we can do this somewhere here below our engine. And if you want to have a look at the body pass in more details, there's so many options. But for this example, the euro encoded is probably the best one to use, I guess. So let's use that app.use body parser dot URL encoded. And then we need to do extend it, extend it, and this is equals to true, just like so. And we should be good to go. Technically speaking, we should be able to get the data now by using the body parser. Let's close app.js and go back. And now to get the ID from this, all we have to do is slash column ID. And now we can actually get the ID by doing for example, let, let's make it a little bit more clear. We can do article ID, ID equals request dot params dot ID. And technically speaking, technically speaking, if I console log this, this should give us the ID that we're passing, but there is no point. So what we have to do now is get this number uh, inside, get this number that we've passed and just include it inside here with the dollar sign curly brackets and pass article ID. So technically speaking, that's all good, but I actually want to make, and I could render this in the news page, but let me actually show you how we can render this in another page. Maybe you want the page to look slightly different. Yeah. Let me show you how we can render this in another page that can be totally different. Let's create a new page. Um, let's create a new page called news 
single dot ejs and for the new single we can actually copy all of this and paste it in here we'll do some modifications in a second and let's finish the rest of the stuff so so we need to change this to be news single and let's just quickly copy and paste and instead of articles let's make sure that this is now this object is called article just because we're only going to have one article i think it makes more sense and you'll see why in a second and if we go back now to new single instead of looping because we don't have an object instead of looping through a object we can actually do something else maybe let's remove pretty much yeah let's remove everything let's remove everything and instead of and just make sure that and let's remove the image as well and just make sure that this is actually still says article just because this is basically equals uh this here so let's save this and also i'm going to change this to news single and let's add a little bit of css to make it a little bit better news single we can do background color ffff max width let's say 130 pixels it doesn't matter too much uh, margin we can set to zero auto and let's just add some padding everywhere and that would do let's close this and the last thing that we need to do is set kind of like a url for this page and to do this we can go back to app.js and inside here when we have this is the front page technically speaking so we can copy this and we want to have an article one now and we can still use the same news router as we used uh, above here just because they are all in the same page and technically speaking if we save everything go back uh, refresh and if we click on one of the links you will see that we are getting node.js express ejs layout and we are getting some of the content um let me click on another one and now let's start populating this with a little bit more data so instead of let's have a look at what we have instead of the excerpt we probably want to use the content rendered so let's copy this and change the article excerpt to uh, content rendered and i'm actually going to skip the image uh, i don't really want the image and one thing that i noticed is that we could we could potentially have a link back to the home page and i'm just going to be a little bit lazy with this so i'm just going to create a link here href uh, with just a slash and then we can just say and l r uh, which is like an arrow in html and just do dash back okay let's save this let's have a look at how this looks okay as you can see we have the link back i'm not going to style this it's no point uh we have the title we have the content which is actually rendered with all the html that comes from wordpress um it's looking nice of course what we can do with a bit more styling some of the buttons and something like that and stuff like that but uh, for this tutorial it doesn't matter too much because we're mainly focusing on how we can do all this so let's click back and have a look at another article so maybe we want this uh, express ejs layout article as you can see this is all rendering nicely and so on okay the last thing that we need to do is the search as you might have guessed the search uh, is going to be very similar but instead of getting data like here and here we need to post data and the po posting data we can do very similar to this but first of all let's explore how we can do that with the wordpress api now to search with data let's have a look at which one it was to search with data with wordpress you can actually do post question mark search equals and then the thing that you need to search for so let's make a note of this first of all and paste it inside here and i'm going to keep everything to do with news in the same router of course as i said you can split it into different routers if you wish to so for the news is going to be very very similar let's copy this and paste it 
And now there are a few things that we need to do. First of all, we need to change the URL. So we need to change this. Let's remove that. We need to pass the parameter inside here. But before we do that, we need to post that parameter. So instead of get, let's do post now. Let's make sure that this is now empty. And to post the parameter, first of all, we need to actually create the form, uh, give or input a name. So let's first of all do that. And I can actually do that in news. Let's do it in news and let's do it in here. And then I'll move it later on. So for the form, I'm going to actually just copy and paste the form to save us some time. But the most important bit here is that you have a form with an action of slash, and then the method must be post. And also inside here, the important bit is that for the input, we have the name of search, which we're going to use right now. And the input uh, submit just has a value of search. That doesn't really matter too much. So the most important bit here is the action method of post and the name for the input of search. So let's save this and have a look at how it looks like. If you can see here, we have the search bar and we have the search button. It doesn't look too pretty, but it will, look, it will do the job. To get the search parameter, we can now use the name uh, to, let's actually close everything that we don't use. And now we need to get the search parameter and we can do the same thing as we done in here. We got the ID from here, but instead of ID, let's do body and let's do search. And instead of article ID, let's change this to something like search and let's pass the search uh, variable inside here, parameter. So we can do dollar sign, curly brackets and inside here we pass search. To render the results, let's do another page. So let's actually copy the news EJS, everything from here. Let's do news search.ejs and let's paste everything inside here. And because we'll be looping through uh, multiple, because we'll be looping through object with a lot of data, we can uh, leave the for each object in here. And we just need to make sure that we have, instead of article, we have articles, 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 and articles. Now that we've created the new search page, the last thing that I spotted is that we didn't change the render to uh, news search. So let's do that quickly and save. Hopefully, if you go back, refresh, and if we search for something that I might have on my blog, for example, Photoshop, let's click search. You will see that I'm getting two articles for Photoshop because we copied the stuff from the news page. We actually still have the links in here, as you can see, and I should be able to click on them. And this should lead me to the, arc, the actual article. So if I look on this one, this will lead me to the article and so on. So let's search for node. This comes up with more articles. I can click on them and they pop up and so on. The last thing that I wanted to show you is that we could potentially use the partials for the search. So instead of uh, duplicating the search a few times in here, so where is it? So in this page, we have this uh, header search. What I can do is cut this, paste it into particles, paste it into partials, sorry. Uh, new file dot ejs, paste it inside here, and we can actually include this file everywhere now by doing by opening ejs include dot partials slash search dot ejs, and then make sure you close the ejs, and hopefully that should bring the same stuff to the home page. So the search should be still there. If I click on another one, obviously we don't get the search there. So let's include it quickly. Uh, I'll copy this, paste it on this page here. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Here. And let's do that for the search page, which is oh no, for the single page as well. So I can just paste it in here. Uh, technically speaking now on all pages, we should have the search. Let's search for JavaScript. 
and this should bring all the posts that I have with JavaScript. That's pretty much everything from this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. Please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. Smash the like button if you like the tutorial and if you find it useful. And let me know in the comments below what you will be building next with Node.js. And also, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.